hope everybody's doing well. One of my favorite all-time marks is Porsche. I've liked Porsche since I was probably four and saw it in a Disney movie called Condor Man. Horrible, horrible movie, but the bad guys had Porsches, and I've been in love with slant noses ever since. Anyway, here's a, a new style replica long tail that Porsche built, put in martini colors, just beauty car. Today we're going to talk about setting up Lambda control. This question has actually come up a couple of times. I mentioned in the last video one of my friends from Pakistan wanted to know more about it. A tuner in Argentina had hit me up. So let's talk about Lambda control and the AM Infinity. First we're going to open up the software. Now right now you will see my actual Lambda map for my V6. This is on methanol. It is in gas scale. We've talked about that before, how ordinarily we would have this in Lambda. But we're only going to talk about it because the question came up, well, there's not much resolution. What do I do for resolution? The way AEM engineered this actually is pretty ingenious. You don't need a whole lot of in resolution. You just need to know where your car is actually going to run. So on this side, we have 100 kPa. Well, we have all the kPa. But we can see that... We have a breakdown, 40, 60, 80, and 100. I put in a breakpoint at 125, 150, and then basically all the way from there up, as you can see, to the, the max on my, my 5 bar, 510 kPa, about, what, 57 pounds. But what we see here is that even though that's only 5 axes tall, 5 rows tall, it's all the same value. I did make it a little bit different at 125 kPa. I wanted it a little bit leaner. Obviously, 100 kPa, I'm leaner yet. Idle, cruise. This is a race car, so it doesn't really cruise. It, it tends to be a little bit lean here, 14.0. That seems to work even on methanol. And then the big jump points, maybe you wouldn't do this. 1,500 to 5,000, it's a steady taper up. Now, I don't necessarily need 500 RPM. I don't even need 1,000 RPM. My car idles at 1,600. So you can move this around. All of these are assignable. So if you wanted an 8,500, you could do that. Obviously, you can come back down here, and you can go 1,500, and it'll say, wait a minute, what are you doing? They're increasing. Do you want to increment? Sure, let's increment. Closes up the gap a little bit. So basically, it's the same value from 1500 to 2500. It is important to note in AEM, anytime you have the lowest value, this is what it will do from zero to that value. So as an example, if you went to your injector data and the lowest pressure you had here was 40, it is going to use this value at 40. So keep that in mind. You can't go higher than the lowest you're going to run or you will lose resolution. Anyway, back to Lambda. So in this particular case, we can see that this table, not very big, but still actually pretty effective for what we need it to do. Now let's go to the actual setup. I'm not going to take any credit for this. Former employee from AEM showed this to us when we did our little class. Bo was gracious enough to share his settings. So we can see... I have one sensor installed, it's post-turbo, I have that clicked, I have the feedback enable on, you can turn it off if you want, I prefer to run closed loop all the time. The LSU 4.2 works great in boost at high levels on methanol even. I set the feedback range pretty high for when I'm on the dyno to help give my map a, a little bit of flexibility in the event that I made a mistake. Minimum engine speed, 700. Maximum, 10,000. You can move these around. Minimum load, 5 kPa. Again, I'm never really there. The lowest mine is, is about 75 kPa. Maximum, 700 kPa. Way higher than I'm going to be. So, in this case, now we are going to look at the proportional setup. Pretty simple. 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 to 3,000. 0.15 at 4,000, 0.200 at 5,000, 0.3 at 6,000. 
we switch to the integral same rpm range 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.9 2.2 2.7 2 these were the settings he gave us i started with it and honestly i've only made one little change and it's one that you have to be very careful if you do and that's using derivative. Ordinarily, this is zeroed out. It only uses the PI. It doesn't use a full PID loop. So this is our feedback towards what it should do in the future. It adds a certain amount of speed and a hook to the amount it's going to adjust. It doesn't need to be much. I found that 10 is good. Oh, that is 0.01. Um, I've gone as high as 0.020. Maybe on gasoline, you could probably go higher on methanol since you're using more. I wouldn't on gas, though. 10 seems to work really good. Uh, after start delay, it doesn't try working for this amount. So 15,000 milliseconds, that gives the 15 seconds is a, usually enough time for the sensor to start to warm up and start to work. Throttle rate, maximum wall wetting. I usually leave these alone. Rearm time. This is set at 750 milliseconds. So if you shift... It's going to give you three quarters of a second before it tries to work again. Definitely drop this to a lower value. In this case, I used 50 milliseconds. I want that thing to come back on fast. I'd rather have it overreact than not react at all. As you can see, the lambda target and feedback gain, it's map versus engine speed. So normal stuff, the way that I think that we would all normally do it. I think our option is we could do it versus throttle kind of feel that that's a little sloppier for the most part not anything i'm interested in doing maybe if it was a in a itb car i would do that but in the case of a boosted application i want a little more precision uh, especially in a street car where you're going to be varying those rpms wildly so when we go to ve table we can see this in use we start scrolling through you can see the lambda feedback over here see how fast it adjusts as the rpms are coming up this particular one i was targeting a little bit richer on purpose we've covered that before Ooh, jumped really fast all of a sudden just to make sure it's safe and then i'll come back and clean these values up later you can see what it said the ve should be versus where i had it Again, on purpose, just to make sure that I have more than enough fuel. Nobody ever complained about being too rich and losing a motor. Usually it's it's too lean and you burn a motor down. And especially on methanol, you want to be practical and be safe. Now, I'm going to move this to about 6,800 RPM right there. And just kind of as a follow-up to our last video on the knock, I thought it would be kind of interesting if you come in here and look, you can see there's this little spike. It's just right down here. It's not very big, but let's zoom in on it and see what it is. All of a sudden, that particular cylinder, in this case, cylinder number two, made a little bit of noise. Not much, though. When you look at the background noise, it right here is 0.107, so basically 11. Everything else is 0 .8, 0 0.08 or less. And as we were talking about, there is a possibility I wasn't quite aggressive enough on the knock control, and I was too aggressive on my timing the last time I raced this motor. So something that I did differently here, while I have the noise floor set similar to a lot of the cars I do, the 0.18, you'll see cylinder 2 actually gets more sensitive, 0.16. And then if you look over here, cylinder number 5, 0.16. Now, I knew I had a problem on those two cylinders. It's pretty common. So I actually increased the sensitivity, even though I'm on methanol. Theoretically, it should be good. I actually made those two a little more sensitive, set the knock to individual because it's a whole sequential application, just so that it can pull only what it needs to on those cylinders. And as we look at the rest of the pull, it stayed pretty quiet for the most part. We're up at 8,600 RPM and just over 10, way better than it was before on, on ethanol. Of course, it's also a little bit less boost. 
a lot less timing. 16 degrees. I have the thing pretty much locked out. 8,800 RPM. 316 kPa. Fun fact. That's basically 31 and a half pounds. One of those weird metric to SAE conversion things. So, 315 there. 16 degrees still. Knock values. Similar to what I had said I wanted. I guess it's 03 over what this maximum value is. And this is a motor that made 1194 horsepower on this particular pole. Uh, 790 foot-pounds. So it's not a it's not a slouch. It was definitely doing some work. Still, knock voltage way reduced. In part, methanol. It's a heck of a drug. Definitely helps. But taking a, a more steadied approach to how we tune cars. Not trying to be aggressive, just make it work correctly. And in this case, it paid off. Big turbo, big engine. It doesn't take a lot to make it happy. So you can see 16 degrees. But also, pretty rich. If we switch this to Lambda real quick, I'm pretty sure that's 0 0.605, 0 0.661. Let me just see here real quick. Instead of me guessing. 0.610, okay. So, yeah. Targeting rich AFR on methanol. Never hurt anybody. Maybe you lost a little power, maybe, but for the most part, keeps everything together. It's better on the wallet, if nothing else. Fuel is cheap in comparison. Okay, guys, I hope this is something that you found useful in talking about manipulating the Lambda target table, how to set it up for the PIDs. Please run back, review those as needed so that you can set your car up that way. Those settings have worked really good for me on a variety of fuels, pump gas, ethanol, um, the more specifically brewed ethanol, such as Ignite, uh, works really, really good. Obviously, the methanol, I haven't changed the setup. It's just what I always use because it's always worked. Okay, take care. Uh, one more thing, though, if this is content you like, please consider subscribing. If someone you know might be interested in this, share it with them. Give me a thumbs up, and if you do subscribe, subscribe, consider hitting the bell icon so that you get notified of new content as it arrives. Thanks, guys. Take care.